forgot. At this time, I call the regular monthly meeting of the County Commission to order. We have with us tonight Reverend Randy Knapp to give our invocation. Reverend Knapp here. I'll ask the county attorney if he will give the invocation and followed by the pledge of allegiance to the flag by Commissioner Henderson. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we again thank you for this opportunity to come together to do the business for the folks of Lincoln County. We ask that you give each one of us your wisdom and your guidance to make the best decision for the folks of Lincoln County. We ask that you continue to watch over or protect this body as we go out and each and every person who is here this evening we ask that you protect them and see them safely home as well we ask that you guide our country and direct this country to do what is best for you lord in jesus christ name we pray amen amen the flag of the united states of america you notice that Commissioner Clyde is not here tonight. He had a medical procedure at the hospital today in Augusta and he just texted me a few minutes ago and said he was on his way home and everything came out all right but let's continue to remember Commissioner Clyde in our prayers we have the item four is the approval of the minutes it's our motion that we approve the previous minutes as presented to you so moved Mr. Chairman that's second I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion is by Commissioner Tankersley, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion? Chair hears none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known with saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. Item five is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion that we approve the agenda as presented? So moved, Mr. Chairman. I second. I second Mr. Motion Chair. by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be named by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion's carried. Departmental reports. Uh, item 6A is the Office of Emergency Services, Director Casey Broom. Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. As always, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. We have my written reports, um, and then I do have one item up for discussion during my report. If there are no questions. Before you go to that, is there any questions to Commissioner? I mean, to Director Broom on his departmental report that was presented to you. If not, you may proceed. Yes, sir. Um, so it came to our attention on short notice that uh, our agreement with CBA of Savannah, which is the collection bureau that handles our accounts that are 120 days plus uh, overdue, uh, is their, their Savannah office is closing. And we have a, a new, it's the same agreement, but under a new address at the Tifton uh, CBA and they've asked us to renew or not to re-sign the agreement that's been in place for many years um, and we would like the chairman to be able to sign that uh, pending uh, after approval from the county attorney with some changes to the verbiage that he's asked for okay you have it in your books the the uh, I need a motion to approve the agreement for the collection service, the EMS, and the business associate agreement. Is that a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I'll second, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Henderson made motion, second Commissioner Collins. Any discussion? The county attorney, I think, wants to address something. 
Just a couple of minor manners, Mr. Chairman. Um, one is, as, as there are two separate documents, I would like a reference in one document at least stating that both of the documents will be read together as one contract. And the second thing, Chairman, is I would like to make clear on the venue in the event any litigation were to be brought, I would ask that that be specifically mentioned as being in Lincoln County. Okay, you heard the request from him. We have a motion and a second to approve with the additions of what he said once it is presented back to us. Any discussion by the commission? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. Item number six B, the Recreation Department, Director Glades. Good evening. Good evening. Chairman, Board of Commissioners, you have my written report in front of you. Do you have any questions? Okay, you got the report from Director Glaze at the Recreation Department. Any questions to him on the report? If not, we accept your report as given to us. Is it okay? Thank you. Excuse from the meeting. It'd be fine. Mr. Chairman, if I might. Hold on a minute, Director Glaze, Commissioner Collins. Did you submit something in writing, sir? Yeah. Yes, sir. Under yeah. B. 6B right here. I oh, my bad. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay, the next one is item 6C, the finance director, direct Ernie Doss. Chairman of the Commission, you have my credit reports. I don't have anything else to add to the financials. Uh, I do have another comment that I'll see if there's any questions on the financials. Any questions, Director Dawes? Commissioners, we have discussed in the past that uh, we got a new uh, accounting system you approved uh, last year, uh, and we are going live on the core financials, which is our accounts payable and our accounts receivable next week. Uh, so we did the final data pull. We will be going live with the payroll portion of that program the week after. And um, then we have a few other smaller modules that will be going live um, by the end of this month, the first part of March. And then we plan to go live with the public works portion of that at the end of May, the 1st of June. So that project is coming along. Um, the, they told us they didn't think we could go live before uh, December of this year. The chairman asked me to make it by the end of the fiscal year, and, and I, we're going to make that deadline. Okay, sounds good. Moving right along. Question, Mr. Chairman. Any questions, Commissioner Henderson? Are these reports under the old system, or these these reports are under the old system? But I did not realize until today that I made an error when I exported them, and so they got exported in. in in uh, portrait instead of landscape, and I'm going to resend them to you so you can read them. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> I've already told him. I mean, I told him today, you might as well not even send me that one. I can take bifocals and magnifying glasses, and well, he's, he's going to reprint them and get them right and put them in our box. Okay, moving right along. 6D, Public Works Department, Director Robbie Seymour. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, you have my written reports. Uh, I don't have anything to add to those unless you have questions. I'll be more than happy to answer those at, any, at this time. Any questions, Director Seymour on his report? That being done, uh, we'll move right along in item seven. Public hearing is there a motion that we go into our public hearing? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Is that a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Tankers. Any discussion on the motion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known, saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried. We're in our public hearing. Director Seymour. Yes, sir. The Planning Commission heard the following request on March the 7th, 2022. Uh, the applicant is Jeff and Sherry Easter, map 30, parcel 26, better known as 19. 35 Lewis Family Road, consisting of 46.8 acres, currently zoned A1 Agricultural. 
Uh, he is applying, they are applying for a special use request to operate uh, a too long concert event during the month of April and May. Uh, this request was heard by my, my board. My board made a recommendation uh, for approval to the Board of Commissioners to allow up to four events per year, uh, not any specific time in the year, but up to four uh, per year, and that vote was unanimous, Chairman. Okay, you got the report from the Planning Commission. Is there anyone here that would like to speak against this zone? Anyone that would like to speak against it? Anyone here that would like to speak for it? We are honored tonight to have one of America's most popular gospel singing group with Jeff and Sherry. Looks like we get a free concert for about 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there being none. Um, is there a motion that we accept the recommendation of the Planning Commission with the approval of a special use well, Jeff and Sherry used to map 30 parcels, 26, 1935 Lewis Family Road. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Have a motion. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Tankersley, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair hears none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion's carried. We're ready for a good event, Paul. We're ready for some good events. Brings people to Lincoln County. Helps us with our sales tax and other things. So, Terry, you look so much like your mama said. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help but say it. All right, moving right along. Y'all welcome to stay. You can leave it anytime you want to, but you might want to stay. Item B, Direct Seymour. Yes, sir. The Planning Commission also heard the request from Matthew and Lindsay Ellington. Map 37, parcel 057A on McCormick Highway, consisting of 27.93 acres, currently zoned A3 zoning. Um, is a, it is for actually uh, for a special use request to operate a Christmas tree farm and an event barn on a portion of the property. Uh, the recommendation from the Planning Commission was for approval uh, to the Board of Commissioners, and that vote is unanimous, Chair. Okay, we got a we got an event barn that maybe we can have some singings in there sometime too. <laughs> All right, you heard the request and the recommendation from the planning commission on map thirty-seven parcel zero five seven eight McCormick Highway twenty-seven point nine three acres is zoned A three and the recommendation by the planning commission is approval of this special use request. Is there anybody here that would like to speak against this special use request? Anybody against it? Anybody for it? No use in you talking, I guess. Y'all are Mr. No, right here. Oh, this okay. Mr. Ellington here. Well, I, side I, this is Matthew and Ellington. Ellington. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you. I told somebody one time before you might not want to speak for it. You got it going your way right now. So. <laughs> All right. All in favor? I got to have a motion. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here. They have motion. We accept the recommendation of the Planning Commission on the special use for Mr. Elliott. So moved, Mr. Chairman. They have second. I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let me know saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried. Director Seymour. Yes, sir. The the, uh, the third and final um, was heard by the Planning Commission on March 7, 2022. Applicant is James A. Gaston, Map 45, parcel 095, better known as 1129 Fortson Road, consisting of 11.9 acres, currently zoned A3. It is for, uh, his request is for a special use request and a variance. Um, this is a twofold. I think we had one of these last month as well. Uh, the special use is to be able to operate a business and have a residence on the same parcel of land. The variance is for a setback variance to operate a quail farm. 
Uh, the current setback is 200 feet. Uh, he is requesting a setback variance of 100, so he'd still be 100 foot off of any boundary uh, that he has. And the recommendation from my planning commission was for approval of both unanimously, Chairman. Okay, is there anyone here to speak against the special use of the variance? Anyone here to speak in favor? Y'all are? Mr. Gassy, yes, sir. Mr. Gassy. Well, we all like quail. <laughs> uh, I think that's what you're doing. You're going to have some quail and quail eggs. And you can look at me and Mr. Jackson. We like to eat. <laughs> Amen. Okay, is no one to speak for or against? Is there a motion that we accept the recommendation of the Planning Commission to grant a special use and a variance on Map 45, Parcel 095-1129 Fortson Road? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? Chair here, none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known, saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. Is a motion that we come out of our public hearing? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Have a motion, is there a second? Oh, sir. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Tanker. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known, saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. We are out of our public hearing. We are back into the regular county commission meeting. Item number eight on your agenda is the Unified Development Ordinance. Mr. Greg Grant. Mr. Grant, you have five minutes to speak to the commission. And as you speak, I would, I would I really don't know what Unified Development Ordinance is, so if you'd let me know, I would too. Mr. Jackson, you would keep the time. That was a yes. land, land development ordinance that we passed back in 02. My name is Greg Grant. I'm 1056 Feaster Lane. I can assure you I'm properly nervous because this is a setting I'm not accustomed to. I've been a resident of this county for 43 years, but still treated as an NFL by some, mainly, the, mainly this government of the lake. I want to thank the other NFLs in the lakefront residential community, also known as the lake people, for bearing the tax burden that helps this county survive. Gentlemen, I come to you tonight to discuss the Unified Development Ordinance, or other LDO, as it was passed in 02. After research and pulling up in records request, it seems this ordinance was pushed through in a sneaky way. I found no town hall meeting announcements to discuss this with the community. I could only find three small legal notices in the back of the paper. The only headline article announcing this appeared on the day of the hearing. The official reading was suspended. Edgefield County, in implementing a similar ordinance with its residents, notified every note of every resident. It seems, Mr. Norman, you had a vision and the people's opinion in this county didn't matter. I think they do matter. Anytime you ask people to sacrifice their property rights, the foundation of our liberties, they should have input. The only people who spoke in favor of this ordinance, from all accounts, appear to be no longer living in this county. It also seems that the people that most benefited from this ordinance were land developers, while unnecessary costs were imposed on the residents of this county. If you review the, zoning, the, the county zoning map, it looks like a divide and conquer scenario. Nothing like the original map published back in 02. It also appears that the county uses discriminatory enforcement of these county codes. Some examples are as follows. An illegal landfill was brought to my attention. When I asked Mr. Seymour about this, he stated that he had inspected it himself and didn't see anything. A couple of months later, I returned to his office after seeing satellite photos showing the landfill. At this time, he advised me he had called EPD. I had spoken with EPD also, and they said there had been no other reports about this. So it makes me wonder if what, if anything, was truly ever done. It also makes me question Mr. Seymour's credibility. Another example is a tiny house off Bass Road, which is only 780 square feet, which it, by itself is against county code. Apparently, the owner found a loophole by running a pipe from the tiny house to the top of the hay shed from which it is under. Attaching the two structures technically made it over a thousand square foot. Another issue is I don't believe the hay shed roof pitch meets county code requirements for a residence. Although it may be under a hay shed, the residents still live in a 780 square foot tiny house. 
Finally, last year, you sent out 150 notices of violations of people all over this county. Violations that were decided on section 18-9, 18-47, and 30-72. Parts of an ordinance you've had 18 years to enforce, but chose to do so during the middle of a pandemic. I also did an open, request, open record request for the copies of these notices. When I talked to Mr. Seymour about how I thought this was bad timing, his response was there's nothing in our county ordinance that says we don't write citations during a pandemic. Obviously, these violations upset too many people because in July, the ordinance was changed to only apply to the R and A3 districts. It seems like you know how to play the people. Not to worry, A1 and A2, I'm sure you'll get yours sooner or later. In my opinion, if you're interested, interested in maximizing the welfare of our citizens, the way to do that is to maximize their individual freedom. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grant. We will take all this under advisement, look at it, and I think the land development orders you talked about was done passed in 2000 and January of 03 is the ordinance that he's talking about, so that's how long ago it's been passed and it's up to date beyond me, but anyway. Item number nine is the Georgia Department of Transportation Title VI Plan Director Blunt. Good afternoon, Chairman and Commissioners. Before you, you have a contract for the Georgia Department of uh, Transit. It's a Title VI plan, and we have to do this every three years. And this just says that um, during our transit, we do not discriminate. If somebody has a barrier in language, we have a card that they will um, tell us what language they use. And there's also a complaint form um, and all the requirements that's used um, for ADA to make us ADA compliant. And I would just like to ask y'all to add, uh, allow the chairman to sign this, and it will be put on the website. So this is this is my understanding. This is something we do every two or three years. Is that every correct? Every three years. Huh? Every three years, yes, sir. Okay. And this is for a. Um, I notice it's got all the letters and all the forms and everything that you would need. And that would be. Housed at your office if that was a complaint? Yes, sir. And it, we meet the guidelines of what the GDOT asked us to do. And we are just making a motion to approve this as amended. It's got some amendments in it. Is that correct? Um, it has some amendments in the back, but it's the same as they were before. It has not, They have not changed. All right. I think we've gone over this. And, and, uh, I'll ask for a motion that we approve Title VI plan of the Georgia Department of Transportation for the county's transit vans. Yes, sir. So I move, Mr. Chairman. And it give me the authority to sign them. I have a motion by Commissioner Henderson. Is that a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion's carried. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome to leave, too, if you want to. Okay, item 10 is the white clock, white's clock in Carol's service. Is that how you all I, I, I know this is under Director Doss, but I think Director Seymour is really who we need. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Director Seymour is going to speak to it. Yes, sir. Um, so White <clears throat> Clock um, has been servicing our clock in the bell tower here in the courthouse uh, for quite some time, as long as I've been here anyway, and that's been a little over 19 years. So um, anyway, we, we had some discussion. I had some discussions with them about the, um, the clock itself, the, the inner workings of the clock, um, this electric motor with gears and windings and and we've had to make some repairs in the past. Some of those parts have had to be fabricated uh, because they don't exist anymore. Um, and the clock is getting to the point to where it's gotten to its final leg. It's been here, it's original to this courthouse. And so I came to you, come to you tonight with a proposal to, um, to refurbish the clock 
um, to a newer um, electric clock that can be set um, by an app on a phone or, or on a, a web-based portal that can be done. Uh, right now, the way we have to reset it anytime it's daylight savings or the power goes out, we have to wait 24 hours and plug it back up. And it's, um, it's an ongoing issue. Um, the price to do this is $18,895.95. That does not include a crane, which would have to be used uh, to get to the outside of the clock face and replace the bearings and the, um, the uh, clock hands as well. Um, so I ask for approval. This would be paid out of the um, Squaw 6 uh, courthouse renovation budget, which we just finished Squaw 6, so we have some money left over in that Squaw's account. Um, Mr. Chairman, And we a I ask that y'all approve uh, refurbishing the clock in the bell tower. Okay, we do have a lot of problems with that clock. Every time it stops, uh, lights twinkle and go out, and you have to go wait 20, go up and unplug it, and wait 24 hours and go back up and start again. One of the arms off the clock over here. This is really very, very old. So you heard the request that um, I asked for a motion to approve the expenditure of $18,895.95 with White's Clock Service. Also in that motion, I'll ask that we rent the crane at $350 per hour, um, not to exceed 10 hours, which is another $3,500. Rick Seymour said it'd be paid out of special purpose local option sales tax number six. I think y'all all familiar with it, know about it. I'll ask for a motion that we approve this expenditure. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. Second. I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion? Commissioner Tankers. Uh, Director Seymour. Yes, sir. Is this work got any type of a warranty attached to it? Or? Um, I believe that it does. Um, standard warranty equipment requires us is three years on all parts and labor. Yes, three years. So, another question I assume that if something went wrong a year down the road, that they would be responsible for the crane running for repair. Um, if, if there's no moving parts really on the outside other than the clock hands, if the clock hands failed, I would assume so, yes, sir. Um, all the other components are accessible through the bell tower, which is, you know, through, through the attic here. Right. Um, the only thing that they need to the, the, uh, crane for is to replace the, the hands and the, um, and, the, and the bearings on the outside. But yes, I would think if that went, went bad, then they would have to pay for the crane, yes, sir. Any other discussions? All in favor of the motion, let me know saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign the motions. Carried. Item 11 is the jail food service contract. Captain Taylor. Good evening, County Commissioners. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, what we're looking at is the summit food service for the jail. We're looking to modify the contract. Uh, they recently did an increase uh, in their food service. We hadn't had an increase since 2014. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, food and grocery stores has gone up, so the service has gone up. It's going to go up about 50 cents a meal uh, moving forward, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So around $1.53 a day, it's going to go up. It's about a 20% increase. Okay, we discussed this um, cost. We there's nothing we didn't sort of expect. I think we've done pretty good not to have had an increase since 2014 on the food cost. As Captain Taylor said, it's about 51 cents per meal per day, 19.29 percent increase, and. Um, let me just state this for the record, though, that in the contract, 
either party has 30 days to terminate the contract. When we discussed it and talked with them, if they didn't say this, but we assumed that if we did not give them some kind of an increase, they would give us a 30-day notice, and we don't feel that we could go with another vendor if we could find another vendor for 50, 51 cents. So with that said, and I know, <clears throat> I know we've, We've talked and asked y'all questions. Is there a motion that we approve the amendment to the contract and increase it from 260 to 311 for food services for the jail? And, and is that a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I second. Mr. Motion Mr. by Commissioner Tanks, a second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? I would like to say, though, I don't think you said that. I don't hear as well as I used to, but. This company provides two people every day to come into the jail to fix two hot meals and a cold meal. Yes, sir, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They provide the staff, they provide the food, and they provide the cleaning items for the kitchen. So it's not like they bring in prepackaged TV dinners in. They, they do have people at the jail that make this food. And, um, so that's it. All right, any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. aye. All opposed, like, sign, motion's carried. Thank you, Captain Taylor. Thank you. Item number 12 is water system underpayment, Director Seymour. Chairman, members of the board, um, the water sales agreement between the city and the county requires a audit to be done for the O&M cost at the city water plant uh, every year and, and the outcome of that audit determines uh, what the per thousand rate that the city charges us for O&M and it also uh, tells us in that audit whether we overpaid or we underpaid during the previous year. Uh, this year we've gotten a um, letter from city of Lincoln and uh, Mayor McCombs that we actually underpaid $13,808.27 and that the rate would be adjusted from $1.79 to $2.01. Um, this, this is a process that goes happens every year and it's always up and down. I think last year uh, we overpaid by some $25,000 and I think the city had to reimburse us back the $25,000 and our rate went down. Uh, this year, it, um, they, they over-adjusted on the rate, so we underpaid, so the rate's got to go up. So um, it, it's been an ongoing thing. Uh, every other year, we, we owe, and every other year, they owe. So um, I, I bring to y'all that we pay the $13,808.27 out of the water fund, and, um, and then the new rate would be $2.01, Chairman. Okay, you've heard the request from Director Seymour on the payment to the city on the joint use facility. We won't prolong it. It's $13,808.27 to be paid from the water fund and that we accept the new rate of $2.01 up from $1.79. Yes. They have a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion is our second. I'll second. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Tankersley. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. 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 All opposed, like, sign, motion is carried. The next item on the agenda is the um, request for proposal 22-001, Office of Emergency Service Expansion, Direct Seymour. Yes, sir. On February the 8th, I put out a, uh, we put out an RFP for a uh, clear span building uh, to expand the um, garage space uh, at the OES building. Um, we had two responsive bidders um, to bid on this project, um, H and H Industrial Maintenance at $131,500, Peak Steel Contractors out of Madison, Georgia. Uh, at $168,670, uh, and the apparent low bidder um, for this project is H and H Industrial Mains. Both of these, pro both of these um, bids were responsive, Chairman. Um, so, with that being said, I will turn it over to you. Okay, as I have previously stated, I think we maybe 
I ask for this a little premature. I would like to ask the commission to lay it on the table for an indefinite period of time for further study and to be sure that we are, this is what we want to do. And I'll entertain a motion that we lay it on the table for an indefinite time. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Tanksley in discussion on the motion. <clears throat> Chair, he is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried, and we will go to work on this pretty quick. We won't leave it laying on the table too awfully long. The next item is item 14, which is the Georgia Forest Commission. This is also something that comes before this board each and every year where we pay 10 cents per acre for 81,584 acres annually to the Georgia Forest Commission for fighting forest fires in Lincoln County and working with our landowners on control burnings and other things that need to be done related to forestry. This is an $8,158 annual fee. It is budgeted in the county's general fund budget. I just need a motion that gives us the authority pay the Georgia Forest Commission this amount of money, and I entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let me know by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, and the motion is carried. Item 15 is board appointments. Uh, we have discussed that. Uh, and, and we're not recommending we do anything with board appointments at this time. Um, so we'll just leave we'll just leave that alone, and, and uh, we'll look at our board appointments later. Any questions? The next item is the item 16, which is the hardest one to get a motion on a second on. Is that motion that we adjourn? So move, Mr. Chairman. Say a second. I'll second it. <laughs> motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Tangley. In discussion on the motion, Chair, he is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know and say an aye. aye. Those that oppose, say aye. Hear none, and motion is carried. We stand adjourned.